Is it possible that you're endangering the life of a child and you don't even know it? We'll find out on this episode of One for the Road. The concept for this episode came from a friend and a fan of our show, David Sanko with Advent Health. He approached me one day in the emergency room and he said, Steve, you know, we're still seeing so many children come into the emergency room either completely unrestrained or restrained in some type of device that is just totally inappropriate for a child. And I agree, this is a huge problem. We're gonna transport over 6 million people in the United States. And unfortunately, about 10,000 of those ambulances are gonna have crashes that end in an injury or a fatality. A thousand of those injury accidents are gonna involve a child. So now that you know that, you have a duty to protect every child in your ambulance with proper restraint. And when a child is sick and needs to be transported, this can leave you in a tight spot if you're unprepared. This is a huge topic, but I do wanna throw at you a few guidelines that may help you solve this problem. First, how about a few don'ts? Can we please stop transporting kids in their mother's arms or a parent's lap? This has never been acceptable, and I think we've always known that. If you saw this happening in a passenger vehicle, you would lose your mind, right? But in the back of the magic box, we sometimes pretend that this is suddenly acceptable, and it's not. We should also transport non-injured children in some other vehicle, a parent's car, a cop car, a supervisor vehicle. Any of those options are safer than being in an ambulance, whether it's going emergent or non-emergent. We should also never secure a child in an ambulance sideways. Whether they're in or out of a child restraint seat, it doesn't matter. The bench seat and the captain's chair are off limits to children. They can't support the lateral forces of a frontal collision if they're sideways inside the vehicle. So what do you do? When possible, secure a child to the pram or the cot in the child seat that they use every day. It's already fitted for them. And for seats that have two holes through the base, they can be adequately secured to the pram if multiple pram buckles are used through both of those anchoring points. For those booster type seats that only have one hole going through them, they need to be in the captain's chair or not at all. They just, they don't work well in securing them to a pram or a cot. In all cases, kids should be restrained facing the rear of the vehicle. No forward facing kids in our ambulances, regardless of how they normally sit in their passenger vehicle. But here's an even better idea. If your ambulance company is in the business of transporting children ever, they should be investing in proper child seat restraint systems that integrate into your existing pram bed or cot. No more excuses. There are a bunch of devices out there, but we need to have them available and we need to know how to use them. Like now, like yesterday, before the sick kid who needs a ride to the hospital shows up. This is a predictable situation. And if we're being stuck in a bad spot by having to endanger a child to take them to a hospital, then we need to start making noise about that right now. Join me in demanding a safe mechanism for transporting children to a full range of sizes, whether they are infants all the way through adolescence, for every medical transport service out there. Kids deserve a safe ride to the hospital just like you and me and every other patient. Also, if you're in the United States, there's another call to action I'd like to make you aware of. There is a group called EMS for Children, and they have an EMS for Children program manager in every single state. So you can Google it and find out who that person is for your state. And that individual is there to help you come up with solutions that fit your organization, your region, your protocols, and your specific needs. I also wanna thank Jason Kotis with Children's Hospital of Colorado for helping us with a lot of the research and data that we used 
in this episode. I'm Steve Whitehead. Thanks for watching. That is one for the road.